Hi, this is Pastor Mike with this week's View from the Pew. Well, Deborah and I hope that uh, you and your family had the most wonderful Christmas possible. We wish you great um, wishes on the year 2013, that uh, life will be even better for you next year. Hope we survived that uh, Mayan calendar debacle. And uh, But the funny thing is we have to live each day as though this possibly is the last. And so often I see that in my work, that the regret that people have when they wish that they could say, I love you to their loved ones one more time. So please live your life like it's your last. Each day is a precious gift. And the most precious gift, of course, comes to us from the Father who allows us the opportunity to be redeemed by his son and to be taken back to heaven with him. Our reading for today, uh, we're reading for the uh, first, well, the Epiphany Sunday, uh, January 6th. Ironically, it does fall on a Sunday this year. Matthew uh, 2, verses 1 through 12. After G Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where was the one who was to be born the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jeru Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, Where is the Magi, to, or where is the Messiah to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I might go and worship him as well. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Well, my reading for today is entitled, A Song, A Star, and a Savior, the Three S's. In a Family Circle cartoon, the little girl sits her baby brother is on her lap and tells him the story of Christmas. It goes something like this. Jesus was born just in time for Christmas up in the North Pole, surrounded by eight tiny reindeer and the Virgin Mary. Then Santa Claus showed up with lots of toys and stuff and some swaddling clothes. The three wise men and elves all sang Christmas carols, while the little drummer boy and Scrooge helped Joseph trim the tree. In the meantime, Frosty the snowman saw his star. Well, thus concludeth a reading from the family circle. Well, obviously that's not the reading from the Bible. We want to deal with that this afternoon with some of the simple, basic elements of the Christmas story. Hopefully the rush and turmoil of that pre-Christmas shopping, decorating, the banquets, the Christmas parties, etc., for the most part, it's behind us. I know some Christmas parties go far into January. And now it's time to deal with some of the quiet time, the precious truths that occupy the important place in our heart that time after Christmas. There are three things we need this Christmas to make this a time of spiritual growth, of spiritual renewal. First of all, we need a song to sing. How much poorer Christmas would be without the sounds of music in the air. Silent night, O little town of Bethlehem. 
joy to the world. How our hearts rejoice in the triumphant hymns and tender carols that herald this special season of the year. I could not imagine letting Christmas go without at least once listening joyfully to the sound of a great choir singing that hallelujah chorus. There's something about Christmas that lends itself to lovely melodies and gentle rhythms of adoration and of praise to a small child. And of course, the greatest Christmas song of all is the song the shepherds heard on the Judean hillside, the song of the angels, glory to God in the highest, on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. That is a song we need to sing throughout the year. What a lift it would be just a few years back to hear those astronauts as they circled the earth on Christmas Day read from the Bible. Their perspective helped us become aware that we're all fellow passengers right here on Spaceship Earth. Such a reminder is music for any season of the year. During World War II, there was an airstrip built on a small tropical island in the South Pacific. The chaplain and others had tried to tell the natives about the Christian faith, but the natives responded very slowly. Suddenly orders came to move, move out on Christmas Day in 1943. The departing Americans gave a farewell party with makeshift gifts, and several tried to explain the origin of Christmas and the true meaning of the Christmas spirit. A few years later, that same chaplain stopped off at that island en route to a Far East assignment. He was greeted with excitement and was taken to this beautiful church that the natives had built. Over the doorway was crudely lettered, This is our church, built on faith and brotherly love. The chaplain stayed for a service of worship at the church. There were no seats. The songs were all Christmas carols because they were the only things the natives knew. One native explained to the chaplain, After you left, we built this church to worship Jesus. We worship him with the only service we know. That's Christmas, the day he was born. Every day is Christmas here. Every day that the Christ child is born anew. Our gift is to give love. Our church, we call it the Christmas church. How the world needs a Christmas song, and we need that Christmas church. In the second place, we need a star that we can follow. Indeed, it may be the greatest need of our time and our generation to find a star, a singular goal, an objective upon which we can face our, face our gaze upon towards something which together we can move. That star that led those magi, that's what we need in our lives. The tragedy of our time is that people are pulling in so many different directions rather than moving towards that kingdom of God we seem more likely to be headed towards anarchy. We need a star from on high to follow. We need a vision of a better world towards which to strive. If there's an urgent demand being thrust upon the Christian church today, it's that plaintive ideal of society to, to a church to translate the concept of the kingdom of God into a concrete 20th century language. Henry Emerson Fosdick, in a book entitled On Being Fit to Live With, tells of a church on the coast of England that had been destroyed by a, hur or by a hurricane. Its members felt unable to build it again. The ruins remained untouched. One day, however, the British Admiralty sent a representative to urge its rebuilding. He told the people that if they were not going to rebuild the church, the government of England would. Why, he was asked. Well, it seems that the spire of that church is on our charts and maps. It's the landmark by which our ships of the seven seas steer their course. They needed that church to steer by. Certainly the basic decency and honesty of Christmas is part of our kingdom. A post-Watergate era searches for something to believe in. It wants to know the traditional values 
high ethical standards are yet alive and relevant in this new age. They look to a church to put their star back in the heavens. That's the second thing we need, a star that we can follow. I found it interesting that after the school shooting in Connecticut, that we saw the TV networks all bringing on well-known TV evangelists. I listened as Joel Osteen tried to explain how we get through troubled times. It's funny that when we have those troubled times, people search for an answer and they search towards Jesus. Isn't that strange that throughout the rest of the year, unless something bad happens, we seem to push Jesus aside and we start going our separate ways. But when we have that disaster occur, when we have the unexplained, we look to Christ, and I find that comforting. Here's the final but most important thing. We need a Savior that we can worship. Norman A. McMurray, a good Irishman there, tells about a palace in the city of Rome in which there was a great high dome. Inside that dome was a painting known as the Dawn by Gido Renai. In order that the visitors may see this wonderful masterpiece, a table was placed directly beneath the dome, and on that table was a mirror. When one looks into the mirror, he sees the majestic painting far above. Is that not what the incarnation is all about? Jesus of Nazareth was that mirror image of God brought down to us. Do you remember Louis Cassille's famous parable of the birds? It was a Christmas Eve and the man's wife and children were getting ready to go to church. He wasn't going. He simply just could not understand what Christmas was all about. This claim that God became man, he told his wife, and he just could not fathom that. It had been snowing all day and it was beginning to snow harder as the man's family rode off to church without him. He drew up a chair in the fireplace and began to read his newspaper. A few minutes later, there was this thud, 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 one after that, one after the other, hitting the Christmas window or the kitchen window. When he went to investigate, he found that a flock of birds was out in the backyard. They'd been caught in a storm and, in desperate search for shelter, were trying to fly through the kitchen window. Now, this man was a very kind man. So he tried to think of something he could do so that the birds wouldn't freeze. Suddenly he thought, the barn, that would be a perfect shelter. So he put on his coat and his overshoes and tramped out through the deepening snow out to the barn and opened the door wide and turned on the light. But the birds didn't come in. Ah, food will bring, bring them in, he thought. He tur hurried back to the house and brought out breadcrumbs and he sprinkled on the snow making a trail to the barn. But the birds ignored the breadcrumbs and continued to flop around helplessly in the snow. He tried shooing them towards the barn by walking around and waving his arms. They scattered in every direction except into the light of the warm barn. They find me a strange and terrifying creature, he said to himself, and I can't seem to think of any way to let them know how they can trust me. Puzzled and dismayed, he pondered his thought. If only I could be a bird myself for a moment, perhaps I could lead them to safety. If only I could be a bird myself. As he said that, the church bells began to peal, the glad tidings of Christmas. The man stood silently for a minute, then sank to his knees in that snow. Now I understand, he whispered as he lifted his gaze to the sky. Now I see why you had to become man. Jesus came down to lead us to that warm, safe barn. The world needs the reflection of God's goodness and love. It needs it before it will be able to sing the song of peace on earth and goodwill to all men. It needs it before it will recognize and follow the star of a lasting value and high ethical standards. 
It needs a savior that it can worship. And it's the greatest need as well to kneel before the manger of Bethlehem and to pray, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Then within our hearts, we will hear the song and behold again the star. For the Savior will make us his own. That's this week's View from the Pew. Again, a very holy and blessed and peaceful 2013 to you and your family. If you like this broadcast, please let me know. My telephone number, 952-303-1688. That's this week's View from the Pew. Enjoy. Enjoy.